My name's Michelle and this is my Willy Wumpkins channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today's adventure um, started just over a year ago. Um, if you've looked at my other tutorials, you will have noticed that now and then my children ask me to make things for them. And this started when my daughter had Gary come to live with us. Now Gary is a funky little dude. He's very well loved, as you can see. And at the time, he didn't have any, as my daughter would say, nanny made knits or crochets. And she'd seen a little jacket that she wanted me to make for him. Now that was over a year ago. And what we came up with was this little Harry Styles inspired jacket for Gary. Now, if you want to make this, you can look back and you'll see the tutorials for this. But as you can see, it's well worn. He loves this jacket, don't you, Gary? But Gary's sister has come to live with us and her name is Swirly Shirley. Now, let's get Swirly Shirley. As you can see, she's a much fluffier version than Gary because Swirly Shirley loves to keep herself looking pristine, don't you? But something she does keep doing, she keeps taking Gary's cardigan. So again, my daughter said, Mom, Shirley needs her own cardigan. But because of her lovely colours, we don't want to um, overshadow the beautiful tones in her fur. So can we have one that reminds her of her brother Gary? So we've chosen to make this new tutorial in colours of green, different colours of green, and we're going to show you now. So in this tutorial we're going to show you how to make the cardigan that you're about to see. I'll pop the uh, photograph up now. There you go. Isn't it lovely? And um, you didn't see that then, did you? Because this is a surprise for you, so no. You were looking elsewhere, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so Gary asked my daughter to ask for his sister because he doesn't want his clothes being stolen all the time of his sister by his sister I should say so let's get into the tutorial so you two you're gonna go and play now there you go let's give you back yeah you behave <laughs> so let's show you the colors that we've chosen we're going to be using a double knit weight um, all crochet terms will be in UK terminology but we're just going to be using chain stitch, uh, double crochet and treble crochet which even the most inexperienced of crocheters there are plenty of videos to teach you how to do the actual stitch but you should be able to follow as well along when I do the crochet for you later so we've gone with a neutral beige colour, we've gone with this limey green colour, then a pale green, <coughs> sorry it's a remnant of Covid, I did a while ago but it just doesn't want to go away. This beautiful, well it, I used to call bottle green. I think people now are calling it forest green, but I, it's all, it'll always be bottle green to me. My school uniform colours. You are me high, yay. <laughs> uh, which, have I left any out now? One, two, three, four. No, we need, we need some more. There we go. This bright green. Bright, bright, bright. And... This emerald green. Let's just pop them all back in the bag to keep safe and sound. Oh, I just think I didn't show you one of the colours. Did I show you this? If not, here it is. And if I did, here it is again. <laughs> so you're going to need five colours. And we're going to be making six Don't. Oh dear. You're 
you're going to need six different colors for the squares so we've gone for five shades of green plus a plus the beige color then you're also going to need a contrasting color to crochet the squares together and for the collar the collar the cuffs on the arms and around the base band and we've also used the same contrasting color up the front to finish it off so we've gone with this lovely slate grey which is not coming up quite as dark on camera as it is in real life but um, we feel that it goes really well with the greeny colours <coughs> so you're going to also need a crochet hook now it won't, I don't think it's going to focus because my face keeps moving there you go I have. nope anyway you're going to need a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook I've got an Addy crochet hook but any that you're comfortable using works I prefer an Addy ergonomic for my joints but somebody has borrowed it and not put it back so I'm sticking with my other uh, Addy type of crochet hook you can use plastic you can I don't really recommend plastic because it drags the yarn and it, it's not as enjoyable to work with you can use wood again that's a bit draggy it's um it's almost like the wood splinters you know catch the yarn so metal or uh, nickel they're the ones really that you need to be using because the yarn slides quite easily you know through the through the fabric Okay, so you just had a little peek there. We're going to be making little granny squares like this. Let's just get that into focus for you. There we go. And as you can see, we've got the center round followed by the round that gives us the square corners. So it's just a two round pattern to the square. <coughs> um, and we're going to be making six of these and then we're going to be attaching the six to each other but we'll show you that when we get there so first we need to know how to make this square don't we so I'll just turn this camera around and I'll show you how to do it so we'll put our finished square to the side there so you can see it but it's not our focus for now take our crochet hook and we're going to cast on by now this is how i do it if this is too complicated for you you just use whichever um, technique you have for starting off a chain stitch so i just pull the hook up twist it around like that and then i catch the yarn and pull it through and that's my first knot and we've got a loop on the crochet hook okay so we're just going to work four chain stitches one two three four okay and we're going to go into the top of the very first chain there with our hook we're going to catch our yarn and pull it through and then we're going to pull it through the chain, that's, sorry, the loop that's already on the hook, giving ourselves a closed circle. Now, again, there are many ways to do that, but this is just the way that I'm showing you, okay? If you've got a way that you prefer, like the magic circle, then you just do that. You do what you're comfortable with. So now we're going to do three chains one, two three and we're going to work 11 trebles into the center of our circle which is here okay so this if I just jiggle that about a bit you can then begin to see that, that that's where the hole is okay does that make sense there's your four chains going around there so we're gonna put the yarn around 
for our hook through the centre circle, catch our yarn, pull it back, catch our yarn and bring it through the first two loops, catch our yarn and bring it through the second two loops. Okay, just one second, I'm going to remove myself because I'm not quite comfortable with the way I'm sitting. Here we go, that's a bit better. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> Let's get some focus, come on. There we go, that's better for me. <laughs> So we're going to continue now to work a further 10 trebles into that centre loop and I tend to hold with my second finger and my thumb close to the centre to give my work something to push against, to anchor against. Okay, so yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn, pull it through, catch the yarn, pull it through the first two loops, catch the yarn, pull it through the second two loops. Yarn around, hook in the hole, catch the yarn and pull it back through the hole. Catch the yarn, pull it through the first two loops on the hook. Catch the yarn, pull it through the second two loops on the hook. Yarn around, hook through the hole. Catch the yarn, pull it back towards you through the hole. Yarn, catch the yarn, pull it through the first two catch the yarn, pull it through the second two. Yarn around, hook through the hole, catch the yarn and pull it back through the hole, catch the yarn and pull it through the first two loops, catch the yarn and pull it through the second two loops. Yarn around, through the hole, catch the yarn and bring it back, catch the yarn and through the first two loops, catch the yarn and through the second two loops. Yarn around, into the hole, Catch the yarn, pull it through. Catch the yarn and then through the first two loops. Catch the yarn and through the second two loops. So every now and then you can check how many you've done. So we've got our first three chains there. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trebles. So we need another five trebles. So yarn around, into the hole, catch the yarn and pull it through. Catch the yarn and pull it through the first two loops. Catch the yarn and pull it through the second two loops. Let's get a bit more yarn off my cake there. Yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn and pull it through. Catch the yarn and through the first two loops. Catch the yarn and through the second two loops. Yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn and pull it through the first two loops. Catch the yarn and pull it through the second two loops. So we're going to double check. We've got our first three chains there. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. So one more. Yarn, yarn around into the hole. Catch the yarn and pull it through. Catch the yarn and pull it through the first two loops. Catch the yarn and pull it through the second two loops. So we're always checking because as with anything, our counting can be off. So I've got the first three chains there. Then I've got one treble, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Currently, our circle resembles a bit of a Pac-Man with an open mouth. So we want to close this up. And what we're going to do, we're going to find the one, two, third chain that we started off with. And we're going to put our needle into the, oh, into the front part of the chain. Can you see this? There we go. So it's going into the front and then we want to find the back loop of the same chain. Oops, come on. There, that one there. I'm just waiting for the focus because I want you to be able to feel confident that you're in the right place there. So we've gone into the front loop and see that one there? 
I'm gonna go into the hair now. So into that one. There we go. So behind the hook is the one loop left from the chain stitch. There we go, yeah. Does that make sense? So let's show it this way as well so you can see it from all different angles. Okay, so we're just gonna go in there. We're gonna catch our yarn. We're going to pull it through there. And then we're gonna pull it through this loop that was already on. And we've then closed our circle. And at first there'll be a little bit of a gap, but you're not gonna see that once we've finished our next round. Okay. So well done, you finished your first round. And there's only one more round to go and you've finished your square. So to get the square effect now, we're going to do three chains. One, two, three. Now again, there are many ways to do this. this what I'm showing you is just the way I've done it for this pattern, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. We are now going to go, going to work two trebles and you can go into this hole, but I like to go into this hole, which is just one step back from the chains there. Okay, so we're gonna put our yarn around. We're gonna go into that hole. We're gonna catch our yarn and bring it back through. We're gonna catch our yarn and bring it through the first two loops on our hook. The second two, catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops. So we've done a, worked a treble. Now into that same hole, so it's not that hole now, it's not any of the other holes, it's the hole that you've just worked through. Yarn around, needle into hole, catch the yarn and bring the needle back through the hole. Then you're going to catch the yarn and bring it through the first two loops, catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops. And then you will have three chains and two treble stitches. Okay, so this is now our corner edge that we're going to work and it's simply two chain stitches. One, two. Now some people work one chain, some people work three chains. I've even seen some people work five. But that will give you a shape that we don't want for this cardigan, okay? So for this cardigan we're using two chains. And then we're going to work a further three trebles into the same hole that we've already worked our previous two trebles, okay? So yarn around the hook, into the hole, catch the yarn, bring it back, catch the yarn, bring it through the first two on, loops on the hook, catch the yarn, bring it through the second two loops on the hook. So be careful now because you've suddenly got two holes, one there and one there. You need to ignore this one here. Okay, as long as it's there, that's correct. We need a hole there. But you've got to ignore it when you're working your next stitch. Otherwise, you're going to be doing some sort of freeform free -form crochet that's not going to work for our pattern. So, yarn around our hook into the hole that we've worked our, other, our previous trebles into. Catch the yarn, bring it back through. Catch the yarn, bring it through the first two loops on the hook, catch the yarn, bring it through the second two loops on the hook. Yarn around, hook into the hole that the previous trebles have gone into, catch the yarn and bring it back through the hole, catch the yarn and bring it through the first two trebles, no, not through, sorry, not through the first two trebles, catch the yarn and bring it through the first two loops on the hook, catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops on the hook. And there we've just worked our first corner. If you give it just a little pull, you start to see that this edge here is straight and this is straight. So this is the formation of our square, taking shape. Okay, so now we need to work on the next corner. And how we do that is we count three trebles in our circle. So one, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to put my finger there to mark the hole. 
and then we'll look at them again so you can make sure you can see what I'm doing. One treble, two trebles, three trebles. You can also count on top. One, two, come on, no, it's hiding. Maybe. One, two, three. But it's easier to count the strands down there. So one cluster of treble, one, two, three. Okay. Right. Just have a little stretch a minute because I'm hunched over. Oh. <laughs> Camera's going. Let's just turn it that way. There we are. So, so there's our next. This is the next hole that we're going to work into, and we're going to work three trebles, two chains, and three trebles into this hole. So, yarn around. Work one treble by catching. But now, nah, I'm getting carried away because I'm assuming you know how to do this. So, we'll start again. Yarn around. Hook into that hole, catch the yarn, then you bring the yarn back out of the hole, yarn around, catch, oh sorry, so we're going to put our yarn around our needle our hook. We're going to put our hook into that hole. We're going to catch the yarn and bring it back on itself. We're going to catch the yarn and bring it through the first two loops. We're going to catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops. There we go. Now again we've got a hole here, this new hole we've made. You've got to ignore that hole and you've got to concentrate on the hole that you've just worked a treble into. So yarn around into that hole Catch the yarn and bring it back through. Yarn around, pull it through the first two loops. Yarn around, pull it through the second two loops. Yarn around, hook into the hole. Catch the yarn and bring it through. Yarn around, pull it through the first two loops. Yarn around, pull it through the second two loops. And just wind myself off some more yarn there. So we've just worked three trebles, one, two, three, into our new hole. So now we're going to work two chains, one, two, and back to three trebles. So yarn around, and we're going into the same hole that the, our previous three trebles are in. So let's yarn around, hook in, catch the yarn, bring it through, yarn around, bring it through the first two loops, Yarn around to bring it through the second two loops and work our second treble. Yarn around, hook through the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through the first two loops, catch the yarn, bring it through the second two loops. Yarn around, hook into the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn through the first two loops, catch the yarn through the second two loops. And there we've made our second corner so we've got one here and then one here there we go on to our third corner we're going to count three trebles from our center circle so starting at the hole we got one two three give it a wiggle and the hole will appear and we're going to catch the yarn, put our hook into our new hole, catch the yarn and bring it through, catch the yarn and bring it through the first two loops, catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops. And we've made the start on our third corner. We've also made this new hole which we have to ignore and we have to concentrate on this hole that we've already put a treble into. So yarn around, into the hole, catch the yarn, pull it through, yarn around, pull it through the first two, yarn around, pull it through the second two, yarn around, put the hook through the hole, catch the yarn and bring it through, yarn around, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around, bring through the second two loops. And there we have one, two, three trebles. So we're going to work two chains. One, 
two. Now we're going to finish off this third corner by putting another three trebles into the same hole as our first three trebles are in. So yarn around, hook into the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through, yarn around through the first two loops, yarn around through the second two loops, yarn around into hole, catch the yarn, bring it through, yarn around through the first two loops, yarn around through the second two loops. Yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through. Yarn around through the first two loops, yarn around through the second two loops. And there we have our third corner. Starting to take shape now, isn't it? Just pull it by there for one second. So let's get on with the final corner. We're going to count three trebles from our center circle. One, two, three. This our hole. Yarn around, treble into that hole. So we're gonna we've put our hook through, we're gonna catch the yarn and bring it through. Catch the yarn and bring it through the first two loops, catch the yarn and bring it through the second two loops. Yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn and bring it through. Catch the yarn ring through the first two loops. Catch the yarn ring through the second two loops. Always remembering to ignore this new hole that you've made on the outer edge. We're always working on the holes from the inner edge. Okay. So another treble, yarn around, hook in, catch the yarn, bring it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through the first two. Ooh, there we go. Catch the yarn, bring it through the second two. And we've worked our three trebles, one, two, three. So now it's two chains, one, two. And our final three trebles into this hole that we've already worked three trebles into. Okay, so yarn around, hook in the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through. Yarn around, catch and pull it through the first two. Catch the yarn, bring it through the second two. Yarn around into the hole, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through the first two loops, catch the yarn, bring it through the second two loops, yarn around, into the hole, catch and bring through, catch and bring through the first two loops, catch and bring through the second two loops. And there we have it. We have completed our fourth corner. Again, we've got a little bit of an opening there. So again, we're going to just give, give our original three chains of this row a wiggle and find the top. And this can be awkward because we're working with acrylic yarn. And it gets a bit squeaky sometimes. So I've put it through the top two like I did in the circle. And we're going to catch the yarn, bring it through and just bring it through all the loops. And then I will snip this, but I've neglected to bring up a pair of scissors with me to my camera room. And, but I'm, so I'm going to break it with my hands, which is a bit yucky, but there we go. So that all you have to do is pull that then all the way through and your square is complete. And it can go then the other squares. <clears throat> so, it's up to you whether you make a square in each of the six colours at a time, or whether you concentrate on just making six squares in one colour first. So, I happen to already have my six squares here. in this colour. There we go. So once you've made all six in each of the six colours, so let's just show you now what I've got. I've got my little bag here, my rustly bag. I have, we have squares there, so I'm going to just put that there. 
Next, I will show you our beige colour squares. Now, it doesn't matter if sometimes, even though two yarns can be double knit, you can get a difference in how thick they actually are. But as long as they both say they're double knit, it's okay. Because once we've sewn, once we've crocheted all the squares together, the imbalance will become balanced. So don't worry about it if, if your measurements are a little bit, just a little bit out. So there's, oops. The next one, next one. Here we go. Just showing you. See that one is, is there is quite a bit, but because this is you know it's it's crocheted with the same hook, so the stretch and the gauge should be okay. If you use, however, to use maybe a sock weight yarn with a double knit yarn, or an iron weight yarn with a double knit yarn, then you're going to get a bit too much inconsistency. So there's this beautiful limey bright green. We've got six of those. Here we are. We've got our emerald green. Six of these. Our dark bottly green colour, and we have six of these. And our final colour, which is our, it's like a grass type green. And we have six of these. So next I'm going to have a little play and put all these colours in the order that I like them, following the template that I'm going to show you in a moment, okay? So the next image you'll see will probably be about an hour after I filled, fiddled around changing the colours around and checking with my daughter that she's happy and checking with Shirley that she's happy and Gary and I'm sure they'll call, call their family around to have a little look and a, a, a discussion about it because uh, as it's a commission from Gary he wants it just right so let's see what we what he decided or what we decided we should say So we've laid them out and um, as you will have noticed from my writings of earlier I've realised that it was, I was correct in the first place, it was five colours, not six. <laughs> so we made, we made these for nothing. So they'll go towards a future project. So we've chosen our favourite five colours and gone with those. And here they are. This is the template that you need to follow. The top row is going to have one, two, three, four, five squares. The second row will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares. Then you're going to get this gap in the middle. Either side, you're going to get two squares followed by two squares. Then three squares with the gap being closed up a bit by that square, then two squares, and it's mirrored over here with two squares, three squares, two squares, two squares. Now here it's where you can adjust things if you want to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to crochet down here connecting them, then separately I'm going to crochet down here and down here. Then I'm going to crochet here, then here, then here, 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 
here, here, and here, 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 and then here, 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 like that. And what that will give me is a strip of two, a strip of three, a strip of two, two, like this, okay? And then I'm going to crochet them together along this way. Now, if what I've said doesn't make sense to you, just keep watching because you'll see you see what I'm talking about as it actually happens in front of you. Um, and if you don't want to crochet it, you want to sew it, then feel free to follow my tutorial with the um, patchwork jumper that came out last May because uh, that will give you sewing techniques that you can use. Or you can use your own, it's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead now and crochet these together. I'm just going to adjust the camera so that I can show you how to crochet. Let's start with these two. I'll show you how to crochet these two. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I've done these two, when I've done these three, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, okay? Here you go then. Okay, so I've got my grey yarn ready. Let's pick up our first two. We're going to get them and we, it's important for us to have the fronts facing outwards. So whichever way I turn this, that's the front and that's the front. Okay, we find ourselves the corner holes of the light green and the dark green, which we'll call the light green front and we'll call the dark green back from now on. And we're going to go through the front and through the back. We're going to get our yarn now and we're just going to catch the yarn with a hook. Like that. And we're going to pull this grey yarn through the back and then the front, like that. Okay. We're going to use both ends of the yarn. We're going to catch both ends like that, pull it through and give it a good old pull. And that secures our yarn for us. We're going to drop the tail end and we're going to keep hold of the working yarn, okay? Now we're going to go into the top of the first treble. We're going to go into the top of the two strands at the top there, see? One, two. And we're going to look to the back, which is a little bit more difficult because this is a dark green, but we're going to go through the top of the treble and I've gone through one, two, there we go. I'm going to catch the grey yarn and bring it through and then we're going to catch the yarn and bring it through all of the loops on our hook. And we're going to do this across the top of each of the six trebles on this side. So into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through catch the yarn, bring it through, into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through all of them, catch the yarn, bring it through all loops, into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through, into the front, into the back, Catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. Into the front, this is our last treble, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. Now we've come to our final hole of the edge. We're going to go through the front hole, through the back hole, going to catch the yarn, bring it through, catch it, bring it through, and we're going to leave about this much of a tail yarn. So again, you should use scissors or clips. I've broken the yarn there and I'm going to catch it and I'm going to bring it through. Okay. And then when we open it up, this is the start then of our patchwork detail. Okay. So that's those. They are now joined, as you can see. I'm going to do the same on this row 
as I've just done. So I will sew, oh sorry, not sew, I will crochet up here, break the yarn off, then I will crochet up here and break the yarn off. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the whole garment. So next you'll see what we do once, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> once all of our vertical joins have been made. As you can see, we've crocheted our sections together along here. Okay. And they're looking rather good, don't you think? <laughs> <clears throat> right then, what's next? So, next, we are going to. Let's start up here. We're going to crochet. We're going to crochet. Oh, that one is the wrong way around. Look at that. There we go. We're going to crochet. We're going to pick up by here and crochet across here. So, are you ready to do that with me? I've got my yarn ready. Let's pick up the two pieces, being careful to have them in the right places. So we're going to go in through this corner here. Let me just check I've got the hole correctly. There we go, through this corner and through the back corner. <coughs> so, okay, where's our yarn? Here it is. Gonna pull our yarn through the two corners like this and catch it and pull it through to secure it. Drop the tail yarn and then in exactly the same way we're going to go into the top of the front treble into the top of the back treble. Catch the yarn, pull it through, catch the yarn, pull it through. Let's give that a little tug there, there we are. Then into the top of the second treble of the front, second treble of the back. Catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. Into the front of the third treble on the back, uh, on the front, sorry, and the, the, the third treble on the back. Catch the yarn, bring it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through. And we're going to do that with each treble, going through the corresponding front and back at the same time. There we go, it's the last top of the treble on this square. Now we're going to go into the hole on the front, the hole on the back, catch the yarn, bring it through. And now what we're going to do, we're going to work one chain. That's all. One chain and we're going to oh, just get rid of this little bit of extra hair that was there then. So now we're going to ignore this. We're going to find our hole of our next square. We're going to go through the front hole and the back hole. There we go. And we continue as we just did. Catching the yarn, bringing it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through. Then into the first treble. Do the same at the back. And we're going to work this square exactly the same way as we have the others. you hear those birds? <laughs> We've got a, a jackdaw's nest in our neighbour's roof. And every now and then the parents get a bit annoyed with some seagulls that come over. 
and they chase them off. Here we are, we come up to the corner of our square. So we go through the hole of the front one, through the hole of the back one, catch the arm, bring it through. And as we're at the end of our square, we're going to give ourselves one chain and then move on to the next square. There we go, find the hole, go into the hole at the front. Go into the hole at the back and work the square edge as we have been doing. Now into the top tre of the trebles, front and back. By now, whoever you're making this uh, little granny square sweater for is probably brimming over with excitement. <laughs> I've just have to, have to tell my daughter, you need to go away so I can get on with it if you want to see it finished. <laughs> and I've got somebody watching me here as well. <laughs> Come say hi. Hi. Do you approve? Yep. <laughs> Come on in. <clears throat> So, let's have a look. Let's get back to it. There we go. Close to the end of our next squid. Into the front hole, into the back hole. Do our one chain. Move on to the next squid. There we go, into our top trebles, in both the front and the back, let's get this yarn out of the way, this is confusing you. Yeah? <clears throat> I realise it's a bit more difficult for you to see these dark green square stitches but by now you should be well and truly into the swing of things into for the last hole of that square then work our single chain jump over to the next hole on the next square there we go, into the top of the treble, this is our last square now of the section. And we work across. There we go. Oh, comes along. Get that out of the way. Yeah, and we've got this is the last treble of this section. And the last hole of this section. And we don't need to do the extra chain here because we're going to get our scissors. I'm going to take the yarn and snip it. And we're just going to pull the arm through. So, look at that. Do you know what this reminds me of? Have you ever been on a plane going over agricultural cultural land? Looks like the fields dotted around, separated by the brick walls that they use here in Wales. Okay, so let's pop that on there because it's done and I find that the best way for me to proceed is to join the, this side, one section, then join this side like this so that I 
don't get confused as to where where I'm supposed to be joining. Sometimes, I, sometimes I don't know why I turn around and get a little confused. Anyway, so I'm going to carry on and do that now, off camera. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same. And when I next film, it'll be one complete piece. So, let's have a look at it, shall we? What a pretty <laughs> bundle of spaghetti, hey? Right then, as you can see, all of the squares are now connected. Just move it around a bit so you can see. There we go. There we are coming together really nicely. We've got an all, awful lot of grey ends showing and there's a reason for this. We want to make the edges of the squares look really crisp and nice so we're literally going to do a little tie in them like that. Boop. Did you see that? And we do, we're going to just loosen it off a bit. So let's just zoom in so that you can see this a bit more closely. And a little, there we go. There we are. So if I undo it so you can see it again. Okay, I'm fighting with the light now because it's, um, it's about half an hour before sunset. So. We've got our two ends, I'm going to cross them over each other, pass one under the other, like that, and pull. So we want to do it so it's tight enough to close the corner, but not so tight as it changes the shape. Then we're going to do it again, so we're going to pass one edge of the yarn over the other, just knotting it there. And then when it comes to sewing things up, we will sew that in and we'll have that nice edge. So let's show over here now. Let's just check the light. If I turn it so it's not so, not so shadowed. There you go. How's that? So we're going to cross the yarn over each other, pop that yarn through so that we've got ourselves a, a knot. And then do it again so that it doesn't come undone. Okay, there we go. And we're going to do that now in every corner. So also let's do this one where we've we've crocheted straight across there. So we're going to go over the crochet. Okay. Again, not too tight, but not too loose either. There we go. When it comes to sewing ends in, we'll sew one this way and one that way so that we don't get a bulk in one place. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to sew the ends in. Now, let me think. Are you going to want me to show you how I sew the ends in? Probably yes, so I'll come back once this is all knotted. I will come back and I will show you how to sew the ends in. Um, I think because of the light situation, I may have to do that video tomorrow. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to sew most of the ends in. Um, and I'll just leave, maybe I'll just leave these two. So that I can show you that in our next video. How are you feeling about your work so far? Let's zoom back out a bit. Because I'm thinking it's looking really, really nice. Let's just move the camera. There we go. I'm, I'm pleased so far with the colours I've chosen.
think they go well together. Now, if you didn't know, I'm on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook and you'd like to show me some of your progress pictures, I'm actually also on Ravelry. So if you're able to use that website, because I know some people are not able to, um, then feel free to tag me in your projects over there as well. And I'll come and have a look. As long as you tag me, it's, so it's either at Woolly Wumpkins, or if you do hashtag Woolly Wumpkins, um, I will I keep an eye out for those as well. <coughs> and yeah, I'll come and have a look and I'll admire your work. If you'd like to see this uh, completed cardigan on Instagram, then have a look at my YouTube tutorial. Um, it's, do you know when you've got your you look at someone's page? Um, it'll have at the bottom sort of the highlight discs. Well, one of them says customer kudos, and you can see the completed projects of customers of mine, or people like yourselves who are doing the tutorial who tagged me, and then I tag them in that so that we can all get to share the love. Or you can go to the YouTube tutorial one and I've got some examples there as well. And as time goes on I add more and more examples so you'll get a better idea of all the different types of colours that you can use for this cardigan. So I'm going to press stop now and go and finish this off and have my evening's rest and I'll be back in the morning. Well, morning came and went because we discovered fairly soon after we'd woken up that my daughter's snake has escaped and we've spent the vast majority of the day searching for him <coughs> throughout the house. <coughs> he could be anywhere. So we're hoping he's safe. He probably is. And we're having a little rest from crawling about looking under and behind things <laughs> we've set him a little not trap but you know little temptation center with fresh food warm warm light warm uh, bedding and fresh water so we'll see if we can tempt him back but for now back to our lovely jacket as you can see, if I zoom in a little here, there we go. As you can see, I've sewn in the ends now. I've, t I've tied them at the corners and I've sewn in the ends, apart from the very outside edges, because we're going to sew those in once we've added our collars, cuffs and bottom band. I did say that I would leave one to show you. So let's just zoom in, <coughs> turn this camera off, there we go, we're going to zoom, 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 okay, so we're going to tie our two strands together like that. Gentle pull, just enough to neaten up the edges, and then we're going to tie our ends together again just to anchor them in place, and then we're going to sew the end in. So here we are thread your needle, <coughs> excuse my chest, please. Right then. We're just simply going to we go, tuck into the stitches that we've crocheted all the way along. There we are. And we're going to pull our yarn through. And then we would snip off this end. And you know what? With all the excitement, I've only got to lift the scissors downstairs again. So I shall do this second. Yarn end before I snip anything. 
and this one we're going to tuck it down this side of the square so again we're going to find our work we're going to thread it through and just slip it all along there we go and pull our yarn through and there we have it our nice finished join so I need to zoom out for this next part I'm going to tuck that in just so that it doesn't go missing just adjusting the camera Oop, wrong way. <laughs> there we go so I'm going to talk to you now about the next stage of the construction <coughs> so our little cardigan I'm going to show you its general shape so there we go this is the neck area the front bands will be down here and down here we're going to sew no we're not going to sew sorry we're going to crochet together as we did here the front square to the back square and we're going to go up here and then across there and then tie the yarn off then we're going to go over to the other side and we're going to crochet up here and across here by the yarn off next we'll be making the collar then the arm cuffs then the bottom band and then the front bands okay so we'll start with joining our edges seems a good place to, <coughs> to go next doesn't it <coughs> so taking your grey yarn again we're going to get our two squares find our holes there we go our corner holes and I'm going to tuck this yarn in there because we don't want that getting in the way okay so find our outside holes right there okay shall I zoom in a little there we go I'm gonna pop our hook in the front corner hole pop our yarn in the back corner hole get our yarn as earlier Pull it through the cent the the hole, catch both ends of the yarn, the tail and the working, and pull it through. And there we are, we've secured our work, drop the tail yarn, and then continue with our working yarn. So we're gonna go into the top of the first treble on the front, and then you might need to open it up to see where you work. There we are, and then into the top of the treble in the back. Bring the yarn through, catch the yarn, bring the yarn through. And we're going to do this across here. So in the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. Into the front, into the back, catch the yarn and bring it through, catch the yarn and bring it through. Into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through, into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through, into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. And now we've reached our corner holes. So we're going to find the hole for the front and the hole for the back and we're going to put our yarn, our hook through, catch the yarn and bring it through, catch the yarn and bring it through. And then we're going to do one chain. And we're going to find the holes. So we've gone up here and now we're going to go across here. So if I do it this way, you can see this is the top, this is the neck, this is the bottom. 
we've done up here and we're going to go across here to close the sleeve so we're going to go into the front hole and the back hole of the corners catch the yarn bring it through catch the yarn bring it through now you're going to get see that gap there now I I prefer this gap because with the builder base you can never really be certain of how tight they are under the arms so that's just giving them a bit of breathing space so it should fit all sizes then okay and then we're going to work across here so into the front treble into the back of the first treble there we go Catch the arm, bring it through, catch the arm, bring it through. Into the front, into the back. Catch the arm, bring it through, catch the arm, bring it through. Into the front, into the back. Catch the arm, bring it through, catch the arm, bring it through. Into the front, into the back. Catch the arm, bring it through, catch the arm, bring it through. Into the front, into the back. Catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. Into the front, into the back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. And then we come to our last hole. So we put our hook into both holes, front and back, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through. And then we're going to break off our yarn and we're going to bring it through to secure it. So you've joined across here. Next you're going to have to join across here, which I've already done. And then <coughs> I suggest you work on the collar band first or the neck band. Now what the be the, an easy way to measure this because it can be quite hard because you're going around corners and over the edge and around more corners so this is a, a quick way to work it out so we're going to be working along the edge of one square two squares three four five six seven eight nine squares so another way of doing that is to count one two three four five six seven eight nine so we can make our band and we can be sure that it'll fit around there by taking our band now here's one i made last night when the light got too dim to be able to film but don't worry i will show you how to make it in a moment and we can lay it down here and we can fold it and we can fold it and we want it to be just a little bit baggy so you can see what I mean it's not like overly baggy over there but in you could say it's a perfect fit but but it's not look because you got you got these anyway you can see what I mean there yeah and then we know we've got enough band to be able to complete our neck edge. You're then going to do the same thing for the waistband. Another one that I completed last night. So <coughs> it's going to be exactly the same size as your neckband. There we go. Two there. Oh, let's zoom up so you can see. Oh, no way. More clearly. There we go. Okay, uh, let's bring these back down here so you can see them. So there's our neck band, our waistband, and I've prepared one of the arm cuffs. Here it is, Ta -da! and this, as you can see now, when I pop it by here. Will fit there now again because we've got a frog as I mentioned in my last tutorial because we've got frogs um, 
There are hands. Come on, Shirley, where are you? There you go. There you go. Oh, there. Show us your hands. Hi. Hi. <coughs> so, Shirley's hands. Can you see how she's got lovely big hands? So, we want this not to be tight and squish in her hand. We want it to fit nicely. So, it's a little bit, just a little bit, just two or three rows bigger than the squares. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the, the fake rib or faux rib as some call it. I'm just manoeuvring behind the camera so that I can lean forward and show you without hurting myself. Just unraveling a little bit of this yarn. Here's our yarn using the grey. Um, again, I twist my yarn around my hook. Then I catch the yarn and bring it through the loop that's on the hook. Pull it tight. That's my anchor knot. Let's just release some yarn for myself from the, <clears throat> the ball. There we go. We're going to work eight chains. Okay. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, when I'm doing the bands, I find it helpful to say how many stitches I'm working out loud because it helps to um, keep your edges looking crisp and straight, okay? I haven't got eight sometimes and six another time. So what we're going to do then, we're going to work into the left side of each chain. So apart from the very first chain there. So we're going to go into the one immediately after the first chain. There you go. So we're going to go in there and we're going to work a chain. No, we're not sorry we're gonna work a single crochet so we're gonna put our hook through catch the yarn bring it through catch the yarn bring it through into the net and that's one into our next one catch the yarn bring it through catch the yarn bring it through into the next one catch the yarn bring it through catch the yarn bring it through now I didn't say two did I on the second one but this is our third one. Into the next one, which is our fourth. So in, catch the yarn, bring it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through. So that's four. Our fifth one. Catch the yarn, bring it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through. So that's five. Then our sixth one. Catch the yarn, bring it through. Catch the yarn, bring it through. That's our six. And then seven. Put it through, catch the yarn, bring it through, catch the yarn, bring it through, and that's our seventh single crochet. Now we're going to work a chain. We're going to turn the work around and we're going to work back along this edge. Now what we're going to do, we're not going to go through the top of the two the two we're not going to go through the two strands of the top of the single crochet. We're just going to go through let's put it this way. The strand that's immediately closest to us. Okay, so we're working through the front strand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, <coughs> excuse me, seven. So this hook is going to go through the front strand of the one immediately closest to our loop or our one chain that's on the hook. Catch the arm, bring it through. Catch your hand, bring it through, and then into the second front of the next single crochet. We're going to single crochet that, so that's two. Then the next, so that's three. Then the next. 
then five. Then six. Then seven. Now we're going to work a chain and we're going to turn around and we're going to do the same here. We're going to work just in the front loops of this single crochet row below. So here we go into number one and then into number two. into number three into number four into number five into number six and into number seven and we're going to work a chain we're going to turn around and we're going to do it again. Now you should be able to start to see this line appearing. And if I pick up <clears throat> the one we've already prepared, you can see that that line appears with every two rows that you work. So you'll just continue working that row until you've got measurements enough for the neck collar, the waistband, the arm cuffs and our front band is going to be worked differently. So you just need the four bands. You need two the same length for the belly band and the neck band and then you need two the same length for the cuffs. <coughs> so I'm not going to show you how to sew them on if you want to have a little bit of guidance there then please have a look back to my uh, tutorial where I make Gary a patchwork sweater it's the bright one with the, with the uh, here we go, I'll just grab it so it's the one where this cardigan is featured and it'll show you how to sew them on okay but as for us now I'm going to, with the magic of technology, skip forward and sew this up and then we're going to work on the front bands. <coughs> and voila, we've sewn on the waistband, the neckband and both of the Wristbands, wrist cuffs, I should say. <laughs> Sorry. Doesn't it look lovely? Now, to show you what the finished uh, front band looks like, I've already worked one. And now I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, I've left this here also because we're going to work the band and then sew this in, like I have here. You can see the little bit waiting to be cut off there. So it gives a neater, a neater um, join between the squares and the crochet work. Okay. Let's get our hook and our yarn. Here we go. <coughs> I do apologise for my silly cough, but. Um, I think I'm stuck with this now, so I have to just get on with the videos with me coughing, sorry. So we're going to be starting this edge and we're going to work across here and we're going to turn and work back. And we're going to do that until we've worked all of our rows and I'll just get in a bit closer so that you can see it more clearly. That's a bit better. So if I hold this up, you can see that over here, oh, I have, that's my sewing needle, I didn't want to lose it. 
we haven't worked around onto sorry the neck band but we have worked across the waistband okay so keep that in mind when you're picking up stitches now we're going to be starting the waistband edge and we're going to go up to the neck band and we're just going to finish in the very first stitch the foundation stitch of the neck band which is also the joining row for the patch to the neck band and we're going to be working five rows of what is called in British terminology double crochet here we go so I've unraveled some yarn ready and I'm just going to adjust for the camera Sweepy, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Just rotating the camera a bit more. Here we go. Now, as ever, we're going to be. Come on, focus. I don't want to focus on it. Okay. So we're going to go into our first stitch there. Now you can go into both of them to give it a bit of a more secure attachment. We're going to catch the yarn. And we're going to bring it through and we're going to just do one work one chain stitch just to secure our yarn to our garment okay let's just move this again fell off the side all right then so we're just going to pick up stitches all along here and it should be fairly obvious where to, to pick the stitches up because you're going to work into the tops of the stitches that we've already made. So here we go. Going to, we're coming up to an area of joining so we're not going to go into this grey piece we're going to go into the hole there okay there we go I'm just going to give it a little oh I don't know what I caught there there we go that's it we'll give it a nice wiggle to make sure we don't leave a massive gap there Okay, now into the top of each of these trebles. Now when we come to the gap between trebles, we don't go into the hole. We simply work into the tops of the trebles, okay? All the way across. Now we've come to the hole and because we've got our two chain stitches on the edge, this is why we go into the hole. So there we go into the hole there. Now we're going to work one chain here because that will give us something to sew through when we come to sewing this ending, okay? And then we're not going to do any stitches by there. We're going to go into the next hole there. And then we're going to go into the remaining trebles. Yeah, come into the edge now. So we're going to go into our our hole, and then just that one final stitch 
into the base there. Just to give us that closure. And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to turn around, turn the work around. And we're going to work back. Okay. We start in the first stitch underneath the chain stitch. And away we go. All the way across. my uh, phone one moment nearly at the end we go and we're going to work one chain and we're going to turn so we've just worked two rows and we're going to work a further three rows we've worked our five rows we've cut our yarn and I'm just going to pull that through now to secure our end and that's it we've finished with the crocheting and now we just have two let's take my needle two pieces of yarn to sew in this I always find this the, the most um, chilled out part of the, the project when you know that uh, in just a few short moments you're going to be able to try it on <laughs> see how it looks. I'm just gonna, that's it, got myself a bit skewed. So our yarn has been threaded, we're going to go into into the um, chain that we made. So we can go in this way and then you just give it a little little tug and we come back into the stitches we've made here you're going to see how that just closes everything up and then you can just weave it into the back just making sure that the front looks how you're expecting it to I'm okay with that. So I go in to I just choose one stitch and go in twice to secure it. And then we come closer to the camera. We go find ourselves a place so that we can our needle in and just follow the row along like this. Can you see there what I've done? So you're not going through the holes, you're going through the actual stitches. And there we go. And then I'll get some scissors and I'll snip that. Which again I've left downstairs. I do bring them up honestly, but uh, you don't get to see me use them. Because the times I'm on camera and needing to use them, I've left them downstairs. So here as well, we're going to just weave this final end in. Oh, it's not the final end. <laughs> I was mistaken. It's three ends to sew in. So here again, we're going to just make our yarn appear to be a stitch. So we're going to go in there. Okay, see, we don't pull it too tight because you don't want to distort. The work and then we come around and down here and then uh, around because this is the top 
collar part it gets played with the most. I tend to then once I've gone along the top once I've gone along the top of the front band I go into the base of the neck band to give you that bit of extra security. Right, so that one just needs to be snipped now by there. And then our last one, and this really is the last one. Here we go. So we're going to just come up here. Okay, so you see the yarn is coming from the back, so you go around and into that stitch don't pull it too tight because it'll make it look a bit too steppy if you know what I mean and then into the back we go all the way through the stitches following the row we worked upon sometime earlier and pull this there we go just give it all a little fiddle fiddle Right then, I'm going to put my needle back on here, so just in case it falls on the floor. Here she is. So can you try this on for us, Shirley? So we can see how it looks. Yep, great. So, there we go. One arm. In. The other arm. In. There we go. Okay, just arranging it onto Shirley now. So, are you willing to show everybody, Shirley, how you look? Yeah. Great stuff. Oh. <laughs> Well, you are looking great, Shells. <laughs> that is looking really beautiful. We'll have to go and get Gary now and say thank you, won't we? So if you'd like to get in touch and show me your finished creations, um, you can tag me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Although I don't usually use Twitter, I, I think I can be tagged on there. Um, let me have a think what else or you can direct message me but uh, you're going to enjoy this and now I'll just show you a few oh I've just heard that the, the rest of the gang want to get in on the modeling action so we'll show you some photos now of this on different builder bays but chills this is yours girl enjoy First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I to actually volunteer for this. It, it, it was unbelievably painful. So thank you for joining me for another tutorial. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so that you don't lose me and you can see any future tutorials that I come up with for the Builder Bears. Um, you may want to make something for yourself. I've got a lovely um, shawl tutorial coming up and I've got several shawl patterns and cowl patterns that you might want to join me in making. So until next time. Bye for now.